I will say this. If you're in the middle of the ocean, you could have two experiences. One is you could be drowning and screaming, gulping, gasping for air. And every time there's a wave, you feel like you're underwater and you just, you can't. Or you could be going, whoa, wee. What's the difference? If you have a surfboard, the guy on the surfboard, the bigger the wave, he can ride the wave. If you have skills, the skills that we're talking about that you people are doing, angels, the angels that you are, are doing, I'm not going to tell you that it's ever going to be pleasant to be cursed out by your child. It's never going to be pleasant to hear them do all this stuff. But when you get the, the surfboard of TP and you're riding the waves and you start to see that, that sweet kid underneath, in between, you start to see, to, to see that, that, that kid who you remember from where they were before all of this insanity took over their being and you start being there for them. And you'll see, it's almost like, let me test my skills. Let's, let's see what's going to happen next. Oh, so he took my car on Shabbos, smoked in it, it's full of smoke, left it out, all this stuff. It's like, we're going to save this kid. We've been through as a group of hundreds and hundreds of families. We've been through everything. We've been through everything. And there is, there, it, there is a, a, a dropout rate. There are parents that just can't do it. And I think I would be one of them. I think this is super hard. But I learned from you guys. I really learned from you guys. Your strength. Hashem oiz la'am yitain. Right? Hashem gives us strength in order to have shalom. Well, I, I'm able to point you hopefully in the right direction, but I don't have the strength to do this. I always give the example of the basketball player, right? And who's coaching him? Some short little Jewish guy, you know? And he's telling him what to do? Yeah, that's his job. My job is to try to point out what you need to do as much as I could see, but you people actually do it. I, said, I spoke once at the Shabbaton a couple of years ago. I said, you know what's amazing? I get calls from people from you people, in crisis. Crazy stuff's happening. And I'll, sometimes I'll be like, I'll listen, I'll say, you know what you need to do? You need to do da 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 And then I hear like, okay, and you hang up. And I look at the phone, I'm like, what? You're actually gonna do that? How is that possible that you can actually? And it's like, yeah, that makes sense, on it. And you do it. And you guys have that strength, which is, is unbelievable. At the very minimum, you should just know that whenever you do the impossible, you access that strength that is it does a lot of good things for the world. At the very minimum, you're forcing Hashem, forcing to help His children at the very minimum, like we have the tefillah from Rebchaim Chernovitz, you say, Hashem, look what, I, look what just happened. Do you see what just happened to me? My kid just called me you know, the F word and kid called you a Nazi. You see what's happening here? I have no privacy, you know? They come into your room at all hours, they touch all your stuff, but if you go into their room, they'll kill you. <laughs> right? They take your keys, they take your car, you get into accents on Shabbos, they smoke, they go in the house, they break everything. And it's like, do you see what's happening over here? Is anybody watching this insanity? But I love this kid and I don't want to lose him. Now, I want to speak about something very important. Someone told me that he got a, a phone call from parents in a different country, and they wrote their kid a beautiful letter. Basically said, we love you so much, but unfortunately, you can't live here anymore because of your behavior. The, the behavior was intolerable. The stuff that, that this girl was doing is intolerable. And they were advised to say, listen, we love you, and you can come back. But just like a hotel has rules just like a restaurant has rules. This house has rules. We pay the, the bills, and we're not asking for very much. Minimal rules. But apparently, you know, we, many, many times we spoke about this, and again you didn't listen, and again you promised, and again you didn't listen, and again you promised. We're really sorry, but you can't live here anymore. Done with love. You have two weeks to find a place to stay, and we wish you well, and you're always welcome to come back, and we'll visit you but you can't live here, you lost your privileges because of this behavior. You could tell it was written with a lot of therapy backing and it was done as good as they know how to do. And this guy went ahead and spoke to them and reached out to them and said, no, 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 you don't throw your kid out no matter what. So he called me up, Avi, I need help. So I told the therapist, I disagree with that statement. You don't throw your kid out no matter what because they cannot live like that. If they don't throw the kid out now and they look at the kid with this you're a monster, 
then something bad is going to happen anyway. That's not my advice to parents. My advice to parents is change the music in the home, change the vibe, and that will change their behavior. De-escalate the situation. What? By giving them gifts? Yeah. By apologizing to them? Yeah. By, by, by no pressure? Right. De-escalate the situation. Get your kid back. Right now they're a monster. Make them into a human being. And it works so well, especially with violence and all of that. So I don't say this idea that if you're living in an intolerable situation, you, you were living in an intolerable situation. So you Hold on one second. You were living in an intolerable, it me means that if I was you, I would not just throw out, I would take a machine gun and, and shoot them and then me. You're an angel though, but what you did was you turned them around slowly, painstakingly, angelically, but you changed it. So the idea is when a child is, be is behaving so bad, something's bothering them really, really, really bad and they don't have a good connection with you and they're not able to be normal and they don't think you like them, which makes them, I'm gonna burn the whole house down. You also that, you change that. You changed it by changing yourselves and the kid responds and they become more normal. And then over time, they, get, they learn how to have self-control because they're not, Rishaim, they're not horrible people and they're not monsters and they're not manipulators and they're not liars. They're sweet, usually very sensitive people who are in so much pain because they're so sensitive. And you know what else they're, they're in pain about? Even while they're cursing you out, they are in so much pain that they can't give their parents nachas. They so much want you to be proud of them. It kills them and they can't. It kills them. And you know what else they're in pain about? That they don't get to see their parents look at them with those shining eyes that they once used to have when they were normal and behaving normal. They care more about your liking them than all your other kids. Because somebody broke through that whole exterior roughness and all that you're seeing, all that roughness, the cursing, the screaming, the th that's, that's the sweet neshama in pain. That's the sweet soul that is, is lashing out because they care so much. That's why it didn't bother me when he called me. That's why it didn't bother you when he called me because you because you got to that. Right. Right, 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 right. I'm in pain because my kid is calling me a Nazi. No, I'm in pain that my kid is calling me Nazi. I'm not I'm in pain that my kid said F you drop dead. No. I'm in pain that my kid who I raised is in so much pain that he's saying F you drop dead and that he's putting Christmas lights on the outside of the house across the street from his shul and he's, he's on fire. He turned that around. So we de-escalate the situation. Nobody should have to live like that. Not him and not you. I want you living at home. I want you and I really think we have extremely high success rate that our parents are living with the kids. You look a year later, two years later and they like their kids at home. Maybe they're still dysfunctional. Maybe they still can't um, help out at home. Maybe they're still not behaving properly. But all of this, this ugh, that I hate my kid and I wouldn't be, I don't want them to die. Just move, move far away from me and leave me alone. Let me retire in peace. You know, that goes away. And by the way, not just for the child. That what makes them so much pain is thinking my parents don't like me for you also. There's nothing worse for a parent than not liking your kid. You're always going to love them, but not liking your kid. You, it feels horrible having these feelings of like, I just wish they would just get away from me. So that's all part of what we're turning around consistently on a very successful high rate, high success rate. You're, you're, you're doing great. You're doing great. He's, he's becoming more tolerable. I got a great update this week. Don't ruin it. Make sure next week is just as good, if not better. Okay, that's, that's what we're trying to do.